All right, let's talk about British American tobacco and compare them to the largest tobacco company. So we have the second largest versus the largest one. Both are dividend paying stocks, although one company is growing the revenue and one company is not. I have both of them up on the screen right now for you so you can compare here. You see on a one year basis, we can see that the stock performance of British American Tobacco is minus 4.11% versus up 4.52 for Philip Morris. So just a slight difference. It's also worth to note that over the long run here, we see more of a discrepancy. But this is also a result of the dividend that British American Tobacco is paying right now. The yield is 11.5%. So that means that the value transferred to shareholders in the form of dividend is not compounded into the stock. So it's not growing, it's losing value every time you pay out the dividend in equal terms to that dividend being paid. So that's why we're seeing more and more of a discrepancy over time compared to Philip Morris here who have a yield of about 5%. So should you just go for the highest yield then? Well, I've done a lot of thinking on this stock. And if we take a look at the revenue, for example, we can see that Philip Morris is growing. And if we listen on the earnings calls, they talk about all right, how can we replace our own combustible products, all of them in the future, and compare that to, all right, they're probably gonna take a lot from competition as well if that vision comes through. We have the electronic cigarettes, we have the vapes, we have tobacco pouches, we have loose tobacco. There's a whole plethora of non-smoke, non-combustible products out there that regulators might be a bit more soft on. So there is indeed potential for growth in the sector, although with inflation, taking a look at real growth in this case, and not just nominal, we see that the value of this, the real growth is really, really low. So this is more a company that we need to take a look at from a value perspective and not really a growth perspective. However, comparing British American tobacco and the, um, the new goals they have in the known smoking area, I think that they will lose out over time to Philip Morris. And I might be a bit biased on this opinion as a Swedish person. This is because Philip Morris is the company that back in the days acquired Swedish Match, a very famous company in Sweden. They're making this news, the one that you Americans call tobacco pouches. So they've been doing this for a very, very long time. They have something called Gutia Tech in their factory in Gothenburg, where the pouches are not being touched by a single human hand until packaging. And they've done a lot of quality testing together with organizations such as, for example, Ipsos, where they're doing opinion. They can do a quality study on consumers as well. And they've been doing this development in the non-smoking area for a very, very long time, adapting to the market. For example, you can't crush the tobacco and sell it in Europe. So instead they do cut the tobacco for the sales that are being made in Europe. So a lot of experience, a lot of brand recognition as well. And Philip Morris in this case is no stranger to brand recognition. They have Marlboro as part of the portfolio. Oh yeah, you're a Marlboro man, exactly. So that's like one of the big ones. And in this case, they also have Syn as part of their portfolio. That's a brand that's gaining a lot of popularity in America. It's developing its own lingo. They're sinning and sinning away and all what they're saying. You can look at it at YouTube. It's just a bunch of videos in that topic as well. And this is free advertising in trying to build up a brand. It's very difficult. There's a lot of regulations towards advertising in tobacco and nicotine products. So this free type of advertising is something that's doing 
miracles, something that cannot be underestimated. We're seeing in the numbers, once again, slight growth in revenue for Philip Morris compared to British American Tobacco. So when I look at a dividend company here and compare these two, of course, I see the super juicy yield of British American Tobacco. It's very alluring. It's very tempting indeed. But it also feels a lot like a cigar bud. It feels like a dying industry where you can do a few puffs, extract some final value, and then that's gonna be it. The company is gonna decline slowly. We see here since the start here of the merger between some big tobacco companies here to form British American Tobacco in 08. We see that they have declined indeed about 20%, so not stellar performance. Revenue is declining, new products are taking market share, and it feels a lot like a cigar bud in this, in this case. But the yield, very, very nice yield, 11.5%. And when looking at the numbers, this yield is not currently in danger, it's quite safe. They've been paying it out for many years already think they're about to be a dividend champ by now, very, very soon. But then compare that to Philip Morris here. I think that they have more future prospects. They have this amazing piece of technology that they acquired in some M&A activities by Swedish Match. And I think that they have the brighter future prospects. So even though British American Tobacco has the greater yield, I think that the future belongs more to Philip Morris in this case with the stronger presence in the non-smoking segment. Also, I just want to comment here on the price to earnings ratio. We can see that Philip Morris is in line with the average of the index, whereas we don't have one for British American Tobacco. And this is because of a large impairment charge on one of the quarters, so a non-cash flow accounting trick. And this is nothing to worry about. This is not impacting cash flow, and it will not impact their ability to pay out a dividend. So as a dividend stock, very, very compelling indeed. And if I was to aim purely for dividend, well then, BTI here would be the obvious choice. But as a younger person who has more time, I have more time to be in the market, I enjoy collecting a dividend as well. We're looking at a company to start buying here after Medical Properties Trust. Almost have 10,000 shares in that company now, so I need to look at another one. And in this case, I will buy some Philip Morris to get that exposure to both dividend and growth in this case. It's gonna be nice to collect that 5% yield and then we also have the growth aspect of it with potential for dividend increases in the future. And as well as this share price appreciation. So I did a bunch of research here just on British American tobacco in the beginning. But then I've talked to a lot of people who worked at Swedish Match in the past and I have a lot of industry knowledge in this sector. And in this case, I feel more comfortable buying this company that I know. I know where the growth will come from and I understand the business more. And if something bad happens in the market with macros or stock price, it's gonna be a lot easier to stick to an investing where I know more about the business, the companies in their portfolio. It's gonna be easier to hold and not just sell as soon as something shaky happens. So I need to take that into account as well. I hope you enjoyed this analysis, this comparison between two tobacco companies. And as always, hope you guys make a ton of money whatever investments you decide to make. All right, take care now. Bye-bye.